All right. So what I want to do before we do any unboxing and check anything out, I want to talk about what is Tabotronic. Um, actually, it is basically a sub, you know, um, I guess, subsid not necessarily a subsidiary, but a sub brand of the same makers of Citavo. I thought this was really interesting. How did I find out about these people? Well, I went to Graham's chess programs to, you know, to check on the driver updates and I saw this listed. And maybe it has been there a while and I just never really paid any attention to it. But I went to the website and um, and so I reached out to the company and, you know, you know, for full disclosure, they actually sent me this board to make a make videos with. So, again, um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm excited for it. And, you know, any new electronic chess boards are going to be a great thing. So. Um, what, what do we have here? Let's talk about this. First of all, they have these two, uh, the two, their sub brand, uh, you know, comes in two flavors called a Cerno and also called the Centio. I hope I pronounced those names correctly. And one, um, I'll talk about the differences here in a second, but I just want to just give you a quick view that like this one here, uh, is the, the call more than this one and, they, and that's for a reason because one has peace recognition here and this one right here is fully backwards compatible with all of the Sertabo peripherals and this one here the Centio is backwards compatible with some of the um, Sertabo peripherals and they just came out actually with a super compact um, version here and some of these boards like this one right here is more like a polymer resin and this here, they have wood versions as well. So, so anyway, um, and it's a like right here, Cerno or Centio, what are the differences? Let's take a look at the differences really quick. And then we'll get the unboxing because I'm excited. I've only opened the box. I haven't unboxed. I've just taken a peek inside. So I'm excited to open this up. So what is the difference here? Centio versus Cerno. They're both the same size. I mean, maybe when I say I'm just basically the same size i mean it just look like the square size might be a little bit different well the square size is the same but the actual board size is slightly different but 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 be but but for all practical purposes they would take up basically the same amount of real estate so we're just calling the same size P uh detection technologies the centio is magnetic and this uh cerno has full piece recognition uh, this one includes 32 magnetic pieces with a two and a half inch king and the Cerno. One thing to note does not come with pieces. You can buy pieces from the from uh, Tabletronic as an accessory, but it comes with the 34 tags and assuming obviously that two of these tags are for extra queens. So as I stated earlier, this uh, the Centio is compatible with some of the accessories, most of the accessories by swapping the micro SD card itself for the pieces. So basically pretty much everything except for pieces. And yes, that the uh, Cerno is compatible with all of the pieces, including third party software and drive. So that's pretty cool. So that means grand programs will work with this as well. Uh, compatibility with commercial pieces. Yes, compatible with any magnetic uh, set or you can make your own with magnets. So this is pretty cool here. Now, some people like piece recognition better. I like piece recognition better because it's easy to do position setup. But having, for example, like the Sentio has one superpower. And that superpower is that if a piece goes, if something happens for a piece, happens to a piece, you can make a piece. If something happens to one of your pieces for a board that has full piece recognition, well, you have to wait it out and get another piece. So that board would be kind of out of the down. But luckily, most boards that I've used that have full piece recognition have very robust chips and they generally, I've not necessarily experienced any issues with the pieces. And again, these come with optional wooden pieces. Like you can buy a wooden, a magnetic wooden set from Tabotronic for the Centio, but they come with a plastic set. And you can also buy a, a wooden set with a 2.75 inch King that is the Tabo Ray. Like it actually has chips on it. So you can use it with the piece recognition. So that said, um, that that's it. That's the difference. Go back to the main screen here. And um, one thing I will know if you want to email them, email them at tabotronic.com, not dot it. That's one quick tip if you wanted to email them. And lastly, before I close this out, I get to the mock, I want to show you the pieces. I went over to um 
this website here called the chess store the chess store.com no affiliation or anything but i'm just a nice website i like giving shout out sometime um this is a set that i got it's a very nice clean classic set very nice look well um got good craft and well made um i bought these here myself um, I, I'm excited to see how these look on the board. So with that said, let's get right to this unboxing. And there's actually some more stuff to talk about that going down with this board here. All right. So um, I said I was going to get to the unboxing. But again, I wanted to wait to talk about this. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about this now up front because the software and things for this board, I'm going to have to do some testing with. But I wanted to talk about this because I thought this was so awesome because I'm going to have to make you know several videos with this board to really let you know how everything works and is integrated with this board. So anyway, they have this uh, thing called Avatar UCI Chess Engine. Black. Like, what is this? Let's, let's take a look. It learns to play like different players by studying what type of moves and pieces of changes these plays is more comfortable doing. Over the course of many games, the, game, the engine learns to see the game through different players. The Avatar provides a minimal UCI inter uh, interface outside of the type of software. You can launch it directly to interact as you will with any other UCI engine. So how does this work? Uh, I'm not going to read all this, but basically it, took, it sets weights for certain things, looks at openings. And basically, how can it be used? First, you need to create an avatar, um, include your games on the PGN file, then the avatar creator tool, and wait and download a zip file with the weights and the openings. So what will happen is that you... It creates this basically something like um, how Leela Chess Zero has this thing where it has weights and things. So basically, it's an engine that'll take these weights, you add it to this avatar, and you can make it yours. You can make yourself into an engine. But I thought it's pretty cool, and you can actually use it actually with this board, and you can play against yourself with it. If I'm if I if I'm understanding this correctly, so um. Again, you can um come here. It's, it's called uh. At, avataruci.org I'll put all the links to the stuff in the description and it's when you say create avatar UCI let's just click this really quick and I just want to see what happens where well, you're going to make an account okay let's I, I I hadn't clicked anything yet let's see check if UCI avatar UCI already available let's just see what happens probably gonna ask to log in again but anyway um anyway you come here you download I, I hadn't read this yet but you download some stuff and then you can um um, you know, try out some stuff and check, take a look at these weights. And again, you can take your own games and upload it to this and make yourself into an engine. I thought it was pretty awesome. So anyway, let's get right on to this board unboxing. The moment we've all been waiting for <clears throat> is the unboxing of the Tabletronic. And as you can see here, they have went very minimalistic on their packaging, which is okay. Um, Again, they sent it in very, if you was to order one of these, they sent it with, a, with uh, plenty of uh, bubble wrap around it on top of other padding material. So it, with it inside of this box, makes it even more protected. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and open this up. I've opened it, but I haven't taken anything out. Uh, so when you first open it, you are greeted by manuals here. And all of this, and it, and it got some really good information here on how to use this. Uh, that's why I said I'm going to have to spend some time with this because there's actually a couple of different pieces of software to use this thing with. And um, I have to um, ensure that I can, you know, fluid, fluidly use it in a fluid manner. So anyway, um, as you can see, all of this stuff here, um, more, a little more information here. So let's set that off to the side here. Now, OK, we got a uh, USB-C cable. I think this actually has a magnet on it. We're going to check that out. Here's a car. Isn't that a great reveal? Ta-da! There it is. Wow. That thing looks good in person. I got to say, I mean, it really... Uh, let me get this little piece off here. Wow. That, that, that's... Uh, let, me, let me pull this out of the box here. Let's pull it. Here are the chips. As you can see that these chips here, these are the stacks of chips. And, I, and he said he sent me a couple of extra chips so I can kind of show you that. So I'm going to put, and, and, and one thing you got to do, you have to know how these chips work. You don't just stick them up there and the board automatically knows it. You have to stick them up here, set the pieces in that correct position, then hit calibrate. And then um, the board will know which pieces are what from there. All right. 
Let's take the board out. Assuming there's nothing else in here. Yep, there's nothing else. Let me move this. Get this here out of the way. I got to say, my first impression is I really like how this board looks. I mean, it's really, it's like a um, poly. You can't see the LEDs. I don't know how good you can see it. I'm going to try to get it up close as I can. It's like a polymer, a very cool looking polymer plastic that you can take like a microfiber cloth. You can, you probably can wipe it down and make it shine really good if you want. Um, um, yeah, it's like some type of polymer. You can see here, I'll show you what the bottom looks like. This is the bottom, not really much to see here. It's just all white. You can see some of the electronics and circuit boards through it a little bit. Uh, you got, let's see what size the charging cable on. Charging cables on this side here, right here. And this right here would be the white side where the, where the words are at. And here, as you can clearly see, it says, powered by Satabo. So let's go ahead and take this out of the package. I just want to see how this uh, USB-C cable, um, I've never had a magnetic USB-C cable, so I just want to see how that works. Try to get a close-up of that. And um, I just want to get some close-ups of the chips here for you all and see how you all like those. Let me see if I can get a little knife here to get this package in open. That was, took, a little, took a little more effort trying to rip the tape, so I'm going to just cut it. All right, I can cut this tape without cutting the cord here. Yep, that looks good. I can get in there and get this out. Yeah. All right, that's a nice quality USB-C cable. Okay, so I see how it works, as you can see. If you've never seen a magnetic USB-C cable, should just, uh, let me see. Oh yeah, you can see. I hope I, I, hope I can get this in the focus where it, just, where it just sticks right on it just like that. Pretty cool, I like it. And you can also, I'm assuming, use a regular USB-C cable with that if you, if, if, if you need to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the test right now. Let me grab my other, I'm gonna just grab a regular USB-C cable and stick it in. It should, should be able to work. Let's see here. Yeah, it seems to be that a regular USB-C cable does not work, just so you know, uh, maybe, I'm not sure, but anyway, that's um, just, just so you know that you it, that sort of although this here supposedly actually I don't even know so I guess it's a USB C cable, but anyway, you have a magnetic cable that connects to this, and the reason being is that um, it does not have I, I um, if I understand correctly, it doesn't have an internal battery, but being that it is a five USB five amp of standard power source, you could probably have an external battery source as well to connect to this board. All right, so with that said, uh, let's open up some chips here. Then lastly, we're gonna open up the pieces and take a look at those and just set them up on the board. And then again, I'm gonna have to spend a little time. I'm not gonna get to do much of this board today, but I'm gonna, but uh, cause I need to actually download the programs, install the program. I've been reading about the programs. He sent me the manuals ahead of time, so I read those. So what I want to do is spend some time with the software, spend some time with the board, and um, see how that works out. All right. Oh man, yeah. These chips feel pretty, pretty, pretty robust. Um, let's see here. And that's another thing I need to understand how to best install these chips. Whether you want to, you know how much felt you want to put on top of them, things like that here. So let's see, we can get this open here. Give me a second. Had to cut that tape for some reason. The tape is, I'm struggling getting this tape off here today, which is pretty funny. All right, let's cut that off. All right, there we go. Cause I just want to see, you know, what does the pieces look like in terms of do they have any demarcation on the pieces? Okay, up here, we take a look, I'm gonna try to get up here kind of close here. As you can see, they, um, I think all of these chips just has something unique about them, but that's why you have to calibrate. So once you stick these, you take these, stick them on the bottom of the pieces. So in other words, this, you can stick this on the bottom of any piece. It, it appears to be to me, at least at this time, you can stick this piece on the bottom of any piece, and then you end up setting the pieces respectively on the squares that's supposed to be in that starting position. And you don't have to do this once, in the software, you do a calibration so to know that this chip, for example, if I put it here, would be a white rook, or this chip here would be a black pawn, for example, if I chose to put them under those pieces. 
All right. So now, um, set them to the side for a second. Let's pull out our chest pieces here. These are the pieces here. Got them in this box here from uh, the chest store. Um, they came with peanuts and things, so they're well packaged. They come in with peanuts in here to keep them stable, and they also come in a box with peanuts, so they just don't come in a box like this moving around. But I gotta say, these things are hefty. These little pieces got some serious weight to them. These are weighted pieces. They have, and um, these things feel really good. Um, I hope I really don't have to do anything to these chips to, um, I mean, to these uh, pieces, but man, because these things feel really good. But we'll see. All right. Oh, yeah, they got some weight to them. Yeah. I just want to see is everything going to look right on this board in terms of how the piece size is going to look. Um, so far, it looks like, uh, you know, we got to give up the bishop test. And I'll show you. If you don't know, if not familiar with what the bishop test is, I will show you. It's just a quick way to tell if the pieces are probably too big for the board, especially um, the bases of the pieces, because if your pieces are too big for your board, your board will end up looking crowded. And um, But I think these pieces here fit this board well. Yeah, I like these pieces on this board here. Okay, extra queen, extra pawn here. And yes, I love that the, that the white is not, the, my white pieces are a different contrast than the white squares. And I love it when my back black pieces are actually black. Oh man, I love this. This looks good, I gotta say. This actually is a good looking uh, piece to even set out too as well. I mean, and, um, and uh, everything here looks very, very bespoke, if you will. So it doesn't look uh, any, any um, you know, it doesn't look run of the mill. It looks very bespoke. And I really enjoy that look. Let me see if I can hurry up and get this out of here. Oh man, yes. Yes, I think I picked good. He said uh, that, if the, that you could use two and a half inch or two and a 2.75 inches. So I went with 2.75 inch king because that was what they have on their website. So I think this set here looks pretty good. And at the end, I'll do a close up of the pieces. But now if you're not familiar with what the bishop test is, the bishop test is this. If you take, um, if you take these two pawns off, if you can slide the bishop between these two pieces without it touching with all the pieces centered, that means that the pieces are not too big for the board. This is like, I mean, you don't want them too close even then, but this right here, these barely meet that specification, but, but um, this is a good set. Because the reason why, you know, you want something too big, you don't want something that, that um, you know, is, uh, that might make the board look crowded or might make it a little cumbersome when you slide pieces versus actually picking up pieces. But anyway, these pieces meet the specification and well, they look really good on the board. So with that said, this is the unboxing. Let me spend some time with the software. I want to I want to have everything ready for you guys to show you. Um, and, and again, there's going to be a lot of videos of this because there's a lot of third party software that supports this board and everything. We're going to go through all of that in the next video. So you guys stay tuned and that video will be out this weekend. But with that said, now you should see a close up of the pieces and I'll see you guys soon.